Hi, I'm going to give you an example of a thin film interference problem. So let's say we have a source of white light and it emits uh, light, some of which encounters a thin film and the light reflects off of the thin film, either at the top of the thin film or the bottom of the thin film, and then we uh, observe it. And I want to predict using the laws of physics, uh, what colors that the observer would see. So we're assuming a human observer, and we're going to be comp uh, determining the wavelengths that will be observed for constructive interference, and then we'll compare that to the wavelengths that people can actually see. So obviously you need some data. Um, so assuming that this uh, light is coming through air, where the index of refraction is about one, and then let's say that this thin film is made of ice, which has an N of 1.31. And then let's say that this ice is on liquid water, where N is 1.33. And furthermore, we know that the thickness of the thin film, so this distance right here, uh, the, the thickness of the thin film is 610 nanometers. So a very thin layer of ice on top of water. What are we going to see in terms of colors uh, if, uh, if we have a source of white light like the sun. Okay, so um, first thing when you're, uh, you're doing a thin film problem is count the inversions. So we need to count the number of inversions so that we know which formula to use. If you don't do that, then you don't know which formulas to use. So light comes, it, it has an index, of, it's in an index of refraction of one, uh, approximately for air. It reflects off of the ice with an index of refraction of 1.31. So this ray right here is inverted. So that's one inversion. And then the light that reflects off of the ice and liquid water interface, it's also inverted because this index of refraction of 1.33 is greater than the index of refraction of 1.31. And so both of those get inverted, meaning they reverse their uh, electric field when they reflect. But with two inversions, things are basically normal. We would, we would associate m times the wavelength with constructive interference, and that's what we're looking for. Okay, so for thin films, the left-hand side, the path difference is always uh, 2t. So we have uh, 2t becomes the path difference. And then uh, we have m times lambda. But we want to be careful. We're looking for wavelength in the vacuum, because that's what we know uh, in order to compare it to human vision. So that's what we want to calculate. And so uh, wavelength in the material will be wavelength in the vacuum divided by the index of refraction. And so that's uh, kind of one term there. That's the wavelength in the, in the thin film. OK, so this is the equation that we're going to use. And I want to solve for wavelength in the vacuum. It seems like it's a uh, unsolvable equation because I have two unknowns. I don't know the wavelength in the vacuum, and I don't know m. But so what we're going to have to do is just blaze ahead, and we'll throw in different values of m until we get visible wavelengths of light. So, um, so the symbolic solution for this, we just uh, multiply by n, divide by m. So wavelength in the vacuum will be equal to two, twice the thickness of the thin film times the index of refraction of the thin film. So these numbers don't matter. It's just n for the thin film in this context here, uh, divided by m. OK, so now we just need to throw in numbers. So if we throw in 0, m equals 0, clearly we get nonsensical uh, infinite wavelength. So we'll, we'll skip that one. Let's do wavelength 1. Okay, so the subscript refers to the value of m that I'm going to use. So twice the thickness, 610 nanometers. I'm using non-SI units, but n and m are dimensionless, so it's not going to be too tricky to deal with here. Uh, and then index of refraction for the, the thin film of ice is 1.31, and I'm choosing um, m equals 1. And so I get that the wavelength for m equals 1 is 1,598 nanometers. OK, so that's not visible. That would be uh, infrared light. Uh, so the light would be there. Presumably, you know, this light is coming from the sun, and some of it get, hits the top of this thin film. But we can't see it. So that's not what we're, what we're concerned with. And if I throw in 2 into this equation, then I get 799 nanometers. Not visible either. So neither of these are visible. OK, well, let's try 3. If I throw in 3, I get 
533 nanometers. Okay, so now that is between the rough boundaries, or rough limits of human vision, 400 to 700 nanometers. Okay, if this was super, super bright, maybe you could uh, detect it just a little bit with your uh, with your eyes, but uh, very unlikely. So this is in the in the uh, visible spectrum, and in fact, we can name the color if we look up the the wavelengths. This is actually green. Okay, so we can even specify uh, the color of this wavelength that's constructively interfering. Okay, let's keep going. Let's try a wavelength with m equals four. So just basically the numerator staying the same. I'm just changing the denominator and I get 400. So that's just on the boundary of human vision. Uh, shortest, roughly the shortest wavelength we can see, um, which is uh, we would associate with uh, physical, with our brain would associate that with a color violet. So um, for constructive interference, we would see uh, violet and green. Now keep in mind that, that the human vision will be pretty complicated because some wavelengths will destructively interfere. We could calculate those if we wanted to. Um, some, some wavelengths, most of them, in fact, would uh, neither constructively or destructively interfere. So we would see lots of colors at once and it would require some knowledge of biology uh, to, to really figure out exactly uh, what we would see in terms of color from this, uh, from this reflected light. So I wouldn't call this necessarily green-violet. Okay, and if we go, if we go to uh, wavelength 5, uh, then that's clearly uh, less than 400 nanometers, and that's also uh, not visible. So we're done. We found the two wavelengths, of, or I did, you watched, uh, found the two wavelengths of uh, visible light that will um, constructively interfere for a thin film of ice on top of liquid water. Okay, so that's it. Thanks for watching.